Good evening YouTube, welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. My name is Lucas and uh, I'm bringing to you today part two of my build and review video series on the Detroit Multirotors prototype, the WP-17. Uh, if you haven't yet seen part one of the video, I'm gonna put the link in the description. Uh, that's when I go over all the parts that are gonna be going in this build. And uh, today we're gonna be focusing mostly on the frame. We're gonna put it together, see how all the parts fit, how much it weighs, and uh, we're also gonna see, uh, do some of the dry fitting of the components and uh, we'll get going on this build. Uh, this is also thanks to the good folks at Beaver FPV, so make sure you check out beaverfpv.com. Now I'm just gonna change the camera angle here so you can see a little bit more of the action and we'll get right back to it. Hey guys, we're back. We got it all set up over here. So uh, we're gonna be putting together the WP-17 from Detroit Multirotors. Uh, it's a very straightforward build, as I mentioned in my previous video. Uh, it's basically these uh, arms that are about, that are four millimeter arms. They're gonna go on top of uh, this plate, and then the other plate comes along and sandwiches it together. And that's basically it for the structural part of the of the quad. Uh, I do like the feature of having these uh, separate arms because if you break one and you snap it, you can very easily get yourself a replacement and just slide it right back in there without even having to take the rest of the quad apart. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, the four millimeters are very strong. They don't have that much flex or give, so uh, I think these will be pretty resilient. We'll have to see. Uh, these are two millimeter plates, if I remember correctly. I already have them all sanded down and ready to go, uh, including the battery straps, because I don't want the battery straps to be uh, breaking since I'm gonna run this with the battery underneath. Uh, what else does the frame come with? So it comes with the four standoffs that are aluminum. They're quite uh, quite light, pretty nice. Some very long screws to go through the bottom of the frame and to uh, hold together the arms. Uh, it also came with uh, some neat little TPU parts. Uh, this is to isolate the the flight controller, or the PDB, sorry, from the frame. And uh, it's a nice, perfect fit. I actually really dig the orange. This is gonna go really well with the with the Omnibus Blue. Uh, it also comes with these nice uh, TPU side plates. Uh, they're very nicely printed. I just had to do a little bit of cleanup on them. They're nice and flexible. Uh, the guys from Detroit Multirotor actually mentioned that they wanted to leave it very nice and simple so people can make their own cuts for whatever it is that they need to run out there. So I'm probably gonna be doing a little cut on the side here to fit the USB. Uh, these are not actually for the USB as I mentioned before. These are for the camera which just uh, kind of slots in there on the side, sort of like that. And, uh, and uh, you put a screw on the other side and it should hold it together. I'm curious to see how that works. So, uh, oh yeah, and also this neat little uh, back plate, I guess you could use it to uh, mount some LEDs or maybe hold your VTX. I haven't quite, I haven't done anything to this frame yet, so we're gonna discover this together. I've done no dry fitting beforehand. We're just gonna do it and, and see how it goes. So let's start putting the frame together. I'll start with the bottom plate here. So I'll do one arm at a time. I'll just slide her in there. There we go. Perfect. So right now I'm just gonna finger tighten the, the standoffs just to just to hold it in place as I slide the other arms in here. So as you can see, this is a very quick frame build. This is gonna take no time at all. It's almost boring. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. And uh, as you can see, it'll be pretty quick for you to swap the arms as well, because you can totally do it by just loosening the screws a little bit and pulling the affected arms out and replacing them with a fresh set. I like that. I like to be able to keep a quad flying by just having a couple spare parts, you're able to keep it going without having to do a full rebuild. That'd be pretty awesome. All right, so there we go, guys. Pretty much have it here. This is pretty much the frame. I'm just gonna grab my Allen key here and do a quick tight, tighten it up. Make sure it's all nice, nice. So the Detroit Multirotors WP-17 is a Stretch X. Uh, I've heard many rave reviews on the Stretch X and the fact that it gives you uh, better pitch control. So supposedly as you're coming into a turn and you tilt the quad, you have better control as to how much you're actually 
going into that turn. So I have not flown a Stretch X yet. All my quads are just uh, X designs. So I'm quite curious to see how this is gonna handle and how this is gonna feel. Uh, I can tell you right now, this is already feels very, very, very light. It's probably lighter than most of the frames that I've built so far, mm, even though it's made out of so many pieces. Uh, feels rather stiff, doesn't have that much, doesn't have very much give. A little bit of flex on the arms when you twist it, but not bad. Should be pretty resilient. It's pretty nice looking. Let's see what it looks like with the orange TPU parts. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna leave them on. I'm gonna put them on afterwards once we solder all the wires. I just want to see what it looks like so we can uh, get an idea of how much the frame weighs with just the components that it comes with. So we're gonna put the side plates on, the rear plate and the top plate. Oh, this one is kind of tough. There we go. I'm butterfingers today. Don't seem to be able to do this. Okay, there we go. So these little holes, cutouts right there, I assume are for the ESCs. I might end up widening them a little bit. They seem a little bit small, but we'll see. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, nice. Okay, so then you have to put this plate on first. Probably this way. Nope, oh, gotta be this way, okay. So there's a good fit on the TPU parts. I did do a little bit of cleanup, but they seem to be sliding on relatively easily. Oh, I might've gone too far here. Nope, not far enough. Oh, too far, too far. <laughs> uh, uh. They're kind of a pain in the ass to pull up once you've gotten them in place, but we'll see. So yeah, I'm not too sure what that rear plate there is for. I guess LEDs would probably be my guess. I might end up not using it, I'm not too sure. It'll depend on how I end up mounting the VTX, but yeah, I might end up not using that piece and that's just that's just my preference. I'm sure when this frame gets released, you'll be, be able to do whatever you want as well. Um, and I think they released the plans for the 3D printed parts once they release the frame on Thingiverse, so it should be pretty easy to get. Let's print yourself some replacements in case you screw them up. I hope I can pull this off one. Okay, there we go. So, boom. Uh, I'm curious, I'm just gonna throw the camera on here just to see how it sits. Okay, okay. And the top plate. Actually, wow, this thing's really cute. I, I dig it, I dig the look of it. Looks like it's going to be a fairly small, tight belt, so I hope I can fit everything in there. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be too, too easy. Oh, yeah, I forgot the. there's a separate plate for the antenna mount, which is kind of a nice feature, actually. I forgot to mention this. So you can mount your VTX uh, pigtail through here, and you can have it coming out of there, so you can have it pointing whatever direction you want. But if you snap it in a crash, you don't have to get a whole new top plate. You can just get a tiny little guy like this. Uh, that's kind of genius in my mind. It seems like it will save you some money and some headaches in the end. Uh -huh, there we go. So yeah, the fit on that standoff is not not great. Probably just got, didn't get machined properly when they cut the threads, so it doesn't quite want to catch, but it seems like it went okay now. So now we have pretty much the frame assembled. And let's check it out. So look at that. Super, super tiny little frame. It's very cute. It's gonna look pretty awesome with a 2.1 millimeter lens. Uh, sturdy. It looks like it's gonna be a very, very, very tight build with the Omnibus and the and my VTX. I might end up having to find myself some taller standoffs because these are, these almost don't seem tall enough. But uh, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try my my darnest not to have to get any taller standoffs because I do like the really short stack like that. And uh, throw a battery in the bottom, just like that. That's gonna be a nice little package to fly in the next configuration. I'm actually quite impressed with how this turned out. Uh, so the first impressions on the whole thing put together are quite nice. Uh, I like the way it feels in my hands. It feels sturdy, it feels like it's good quality. Not a lot of give or anything like that. 
I like the way it looks, aesthetically it's nice. Love the TPU parts, I think it's going to keep some grass out of the way too and uh, some of the gunk out of your internals. So uh, yeah, overall I'm really really excited to put this together, I think this is going to be awesome. I just realized that I actually put one of these upside down, but that's fine, we'll just switch it around. So uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and remove the top plate, remove the TPU parts, and we'll start getting it fitted together and we'll see how that goes. Okay. So as I understand, the assembly is supposed to work sort of like this. So we're gonna put this guy here in the bottom. And then this guy here on top. I'm actually afraid of melting the TPU when I go to solder this. I don't know if that's a great idea or not. Might skip that little TPU part and go directly with uh, just a tiny little nut or maybe one of these uh, one of these very small little plastic spacers because uh, they will be less in the way when I go to solder but uh, well just for the purposes of fitting right now let's just see how it goes right I forgot to weigh this thing before I put, start putting stuff on it so let's do that real quick here I brought the scale and everything and I forgot to weigh it okay so let's take a look so turn that off or, sorry Turn it on. Come on. Are you zeroed? Are you happy? Let's go with freaking grams here, please. So we have the frame. So the frame in the stand-ups is about 70 grams. Now we add the little VTX plate. And the top plate. So 77 screws it came with and the little TPU parts. So let's add the TPU parts. We're looking at 86 grams. That's actually pretty damn good. I'm pretty impressed with that. That's pretty light. Cool. So yeah, sorry, I forgot to weigh it earlier, but here you go. 86 grams. Now let's get back to <laughs> getting the screws on this thing and uh, we'll weigh it again later maybe. Next time I won't forget. Only gonna use one in each corner right now because it's all you really need to hold it together and and test the length of the screws and make sure that this is what I'm looking for. It looks like it's gonna be golden. Okay, so just like that. So if you're using a little orange piece, I love how that looks, but I'm afraid I'm gonna melt it when I go to solder it. So I'll have to see. Now I need to find the shortest damn little stands that I can use here. Could go with just a nut, but I don't think that's gonna work out with enough clearance for me to be able to solder the two boards together. So, oh crap, there goes one. So I think these might be the shortest standoffs that I have. Let me check out my white box of standoffs. Yep, same thing, okay. I prefer the black ones, I don't like the white ones that much. Uh, okay. Okay, so you might be asking about the orientation of the board, and I actually did put it in the correct orientation for how I usually build these guys. Uh, I'm probably going to have the the battery coming out of the side, so I'm going to have the FC over here in the same configuration. Let's see if this is what I'm looking for. Uh, so that would have to meet like that. That is just enough clearance for me to put, for me to uh, solder the wires the way that I need to. That's just enough. Uh, it's going to be tight, but I think it is doable. Uh, though, however, I think I actually want the USB out the back so that I can have the battery coming out the side, maybe. Maybe not. Let's leave it like this for now, because this is how I have it on my Garuda. I'm just going to go with it for now and uh, we'll see how it looks like once I'm done here. So that basically dry fits the FC. I'm not sure about that TPU so might have to just add a nut but that should be enough clearance 
Let's see what it looks like with the top plate on and how much clearance I have for the VTX. And the camera actually has to go somewhere as well, so. Wow, that is a really tight fit. Actually, it could be going this way. Yeah, so, wow, okay, so you definitely can't use pin headers on this one. Uh, as you can see, the clearance is minimal. So the camera is gonna have to sit here and with a fairly aggressive camera angle. So this is a true racer. It's meant to be run with an aggressive camera angle, as I predicted. I mean, it seems like you could go even 90, 90 degrees if you really wanted to, but yeah, it's gonna have to sit right about here. So this is gonna be a, an interesting little soldering job. Since I'm using uh, pin headers on the, on the, on the motor, uh, motor channels should be actually quite easy because the signal wires are just going to go into the side over here so there won't be a whole jumble of mess of wires going on in there. So I'm going to have to keep the wiring very very neat and concise. Uh, the VTX yeah so camera would go right about here let's say and top plate with camera now what they want you to do is just pretty much do that, which I could just do right away with this guy because it is pretty much set up for it. So if we use that, like this. Wow, that's uh, uncannily perfect. Hmm. You know what? I might just run with that because I already have the, the VTX set up that way and this is how they're intending it to be used. We'll see. I might go with that. I might change my mind later. Never know. I let builds be organic and just go as I go. I don't plan too far ahead. Um, okay, so I'm pretty confident that we can fit everything if I use those those nuts. So let's try what happens if I actually use one of the little spacer nuts instead. Okay, so we got the flight controller there. Stack's a little bit taller, but I'm pretty confident that it'll, it'll still fit the same way. So I'll just grab it here, put that there. Top plate back on. And let's just see if there's enough clearance for the VTX at the bottom here. Yeah. Oh. Lots of clearance, lots of space. It'll, it'll be no problem at all. So this will be quite easy. So I'm happy with how that is. We'll just leave that there. Uh, we'll mount the motors and uh, start setting the distances for the, well, actually, yeah, we'll set the motors and I'll figure out the, I'll prep the ESCs and get them mounted as well. So you'll get to see what I do with all my ESCs and how I prep them to make sure that I can fly them in nearly all weather. Okay, so to do the ESC prep, we're gonna need the soldering iron because I'm gonna put some beads of solder there as well. Uh, we're gonna need a X-Acto blade. I can never find what you want. There we go. Exact blade, as I was saying. Um, and uh, basically, what we're going to do is remove remove the shrink wrapping and uh, put the beads of solder on it to get it ready to receive the motors. Uh, I'm going to coat the whole thing in drone dry, and uh, that'll make it waterproof. Uh, make sure you get yourself some drone dry. It's made by Autobotics. The stuff is uh, better than conformal coating. It's actually a hydrophobic coating. It'll keep the water off your components as well as preventing them from shorting out if you fall on a puddle or whatever. Uh, you're supposed to be able to submerge the whole quad in water and still fly with this stuff on it. Uh, as I said before, the guys in uh, Detroit Multirotors were flying out in Niagara and it was raining the whole day and they were pretty much the only ones in the air because they had drone dry on their stuff. So get yourself some. You can find it at beaverfpv.com and uh, it's totally worth the investment. So let's start removing all this uh, shrink tubing here and uh, we'll get these ESCs prepared. So yeah, you do lose the DYS sticker, stickerino, but uh, personally I don't think it's too big of a deal. I like actually like the little silver heat sink. I 
I've been running mostly cicadas up until now, and uh, the first quad I built with the DYS 30 amps was Jekyll. And uh, I've actually been very, very impressed with these ESCs. They, they've been a really good combo with the DIYS motors. I've had no problems with tuning, no problems with, with desyncs or anything like that, thank God. So uh, these, are, these and the cicadas are, to me, some of the best ESCs there, out there that aren't, I guess, KISS ESCs, apparently. They're all the bee's knees. But, uh, okay, so we got those off. Now we just have to carefully pull off these uh, silver heat shields. And do not fret, they will go right back on. Not a big deal at all. Oh crap, so this one did not want to come off. Uh, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it just needs a little bit of encouragement. Oh, come on, friendo. Well, this is going to have to be interesting. So this is actually the first time this has happened to me. I've done this to uh, another whole set of ESCs and had no problems like this. But if you're very gentle and delicate, you should be able to pull the freaking gray thing off and just put it right back on. just like that back in business so just be gentle just be careful don't don't go crazy yeah you just have to like peel it off just very gently with your thumb shouldn't need too much strength oh there it goes and there it goes okay perfect so we have the heat sinks off have these guys ready to go the soldering iron is warming up got some solder so let's get the Jaws of Justice. You too can have Jaws like this by just buying a, a Gorilla Pod from a dollar store and getting some alligator clips and melting them in. It takes two seconds, definitely worth it. So the way that I'm going to have these mounted is like this with the heat sinks up, which is the side with the MOSFET. So you can always remember it by just knowing what side the MOSFET's on. So we can do three of them at once here real quick. MOSFET side up. And this guy as well. All right, looks like we have contact. So all I'm gonna do is just drop some solder here and Bare the surface. Just give a nice big fat gob. Just like that. Oh, a little more. Thank you. Good, good, good. Just want to leave a bead. Make it easier to solder their motors later on. I like these fat pads that the DYS uh, ESCs have as well. They actually make this stuff really easy. Cool. Isn't soldering just so much fun? Awesome. Now I just have one more to go here. Perfect. So there we have it. Step one. We've gotten the we gotten them tinned and ready to go. Step two is actually to just clean them off with some uh, with some alcohol and uh, rubbing alcohol, uh, which is what I have right here, and some paper towel because uh, you really don't want to leave the flux. Oh crap. You really don't want to leave the flux on your electronics, it's not good for it. 
Uh, you end up with better solder joints too if you actually bother to take the time to uh, clean them off as as you go. So it's pretty simple. You just just take a brush and brush some alcohol on it. Be pretty liberal with it. Just clean it off and let it dry for a bit. Yep, there we go. So one down. And yep, that's all we do. Much better. Perfect. Now we got the, the SCs clean. Uh, it should be much better for the next steps when as we, we go along and uh, solder stuff together, but for now I think we're done with the soldering iron for the foreseeable future here. I'm just gonna unplug that and see the tip. Okay. So the alcohol doesn't take very long to evaporate once it's all evaporated. Oh crap, I put beads on the wrong side of uh, two of them. Well, not a huge deal. Uh, crap. <laughs> okay. So you shouldn't build this stuff late at night. Okay, so that one and that one, no problem. And that's why they invented solder suckers. Now I have the ASCs in the correct position. Uh, these last two here I have to do the cleaning real quick again because I, I messed up, but uh, no big deal. It takes two seconds to clean this off. These are clean now, and now we actually have them with the solder beads on the side that I want to. So all I'm going to do is uh, apply some drone dry, and basically all you got to do to apply drone dry is just shake it up, make sure you mix it nice and well, and you pull it out, and it's just like nail polish. You get a little brush, and you can be pretty generous with it. Don't have to be shy, and you just grab the ESC and go nuts, and just cover every nook and cranny with the autobotic stuff. Get drone dry on everything, every inch of the surface. Don't worry about it. You can cover those beads because when you go to solder, this thing just goes melts right away. It's perfectly fine. And then we'll apply this again. It's perfectly fine. You can solder right over top of it. 
which is one of the great advantages of using the drone dry stuff. So not only are you protecting your build, you're also maintaining its maintainability. It's pretty great. Way better than a Corrosion X stuff. Get that all over there, so nice and easy. And then you just let it dry. It doesn't take very long, just a few minutes, it'll dry to the touch. I think it's 24 hours for a full, decent cure. So don't be exposing it to moisture right away, but by tomorrow this will be perfectly cured. So cover everything, everything, everything. Get it everywhere. Make sure you like get a lot in between the capacitors when there's like not a lot of room. Make sure you cake it in there so that it, it goes deeper and deeper. Oh, that's what she said. Uh, cover the bottom. There we go. This will actually also prevent uh, corrosion. So if you notice that your components start looking a little bit rough after uh, a few months of use outdoors, uh, this will actually keep them looking quite nice. There's no moisture can get in, so therefore there is no oxidation. As you can see, I'm being very liberal with the application because I want to make sure that it gets everywhere, every nook and cranny. Cool. There we go. So just like that, we have prepared the ESCs, and uh, these guys just got to dry for a few minutes here. And while that goes on, we'll bolt on the bolt on the motors and get ready for the next phase here. These DYS motors here, the 2205, 2550s, uh, they're a pretty nice power plant. They're super light. I love the fact that they have tabs and they come with the little wires so you can cut them nice and short and there's no uh, nothing to deal with. You can you can make them however you want. They uh, So far, they've worked great for me. They seem very well balanced. Uh, they have lots of power. Uh, I have that on my Martian and uh, every punch out is just it's just insane. Sometimes I'm afraid I'm just gonna kill the batteries, but so far it's been, been fine, fine on 4S. Uh, I've heard some people have problems with these, other people don't, but so far I'm, I'm really behind these motors. Uh, I'm really liking them. Might become my next uh, main motor for the next little bit. Uh, I was really liking the 2205 red bottoms, but these ones here are great to work with. Okay, so let's start uh, putting on the first motor. Oops. For now I'm just going to put on four, two screws just to hold them in place and then later on I'll come back with some blue Loctite and uh, put the rest of the screws on. I like my motors to be nicely secured. Come on. These screws that the DOS motors come with are weird. I know they're steel and everything else but they kind of feel like plastic. It's bizarre. But they actually seem pretty strong so who am I to say? Oh, this is gonna look sexy. Hope it flies sexy too.
Cool. So we got our fur motors just slightly mounted on the frame here. As you can see, it looks pretty dope. Uh, yeah, very, very, very nice. So I think now we've given enough time for our ESCs to dry out here. So I'm gonna put the heat sinks back on them and uh, throw some shrink wrap on it and we'll throw them on the arms. So yeah, they look pretty good. Time to put the heat shrink back on. Just like that. Thermal adhesive the stuff feels really weird. Perfection. Jeez, this shrink tube is bad. Come on. I'm just gonna slide these guys on. I'm not gonna remove the, the ground wires because the ground wires are actually quite useful in my opinion. So I'm just gonna get these guys prepared and we'll hit it with the heat gun. And we'll be good to go. Cool. Yeah, the conformal coating is resist heat resistant enough to be hit with the heat gun when you uh, when you do something like shrink tubing or something like that. But it will melt, or actually, it will burn away when you hit it with the with a soldering iron, which is nice. It will give you a, still a very clean solder over any space. So now we're going to start laying out the ESCs. And uh, one of the things that I like to do when I do uh, this sort of thing is use d just uh, electrical tape and then later on I come back and put uh, actual zip ties. So let's start laying these out. about where I assume these guys are going to have to go. So the arms are actually quite thin. They are just wide enough to like cover the, the ESC as you can see. Just, just wide enough. So I figured just something like that. Run the two wires over there. And uh, two zip ties should do the trick. Three little short wires right there. Should be no problem at all. Some of these ESCs have some really stiff wires, which makes it rather annoying to try to position it, but not impossible. So we don't need to worry about the fight controller right now, I just need to see 
uh, on the daughter board where the ESCs are gonna connect. So typically it has a VCC and a ground and also a signal and a ground. Now, um, what happened last time is that I had to crisscross the, the PDB with the wires because once you rotate the, the once you rotate the flight controller to get the USB out of the side that you really want to, uh, it, they actually don't line up with the motors that you want them to line up with. So in this case, this being the front of the motor, and this being motor one, two, three, and four. So motor one actually has PWM three over there. So I'm gonna have to run this all the way across forward over there to PWM one and crisscross it around, which is what I did on my Garuda, and it was perfectly fine. I had no problems with it whatsoever. So uh, yeah, it, just something to be cognizant of is that if you do run this board with this guy and you rotate them at all, you're probably gonna misalign the motors and you just have to be aware of that and rewire accordingly. It's easier to rewire it on the sides here than it is the pins, because we're gonna be using pin headers. I'll show that all later when we get to actually building it. For now, we're just fitting stuff around, so. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Let me get myself some clearance. Don't worry about the wires right now, they're just running alongside the body here. So, so far my initial impressions of the fitting in this frame are actually quite good. If I'm able to build the, the Omnibus F3 with this stack, it should be no problem, though I still have some clearance between that and the VTX. So I was a little bit worried that the standoffs aren't gonna be tall enough, but I think it's gonna be perfectly fine, so we can go ahead with that. And as far as it goes build-wise, I mean, it took no time at all to assemble this frame. I'm sure it takes no time at all to replace an arm if you fuck one up. So uh, I'm actually quite liking working on this so far. Uh, it's not taking as long. And it's actually quite fun to work with. It's quite open easy to access everything. Nice and light. So there we go. Okay. So we have mounted our, our ESCs. So I'm just gonna cut the wires pretty much to just a more manageable length. Not even necessarily the length that they're gonna be at, just something that's a little bit easier to work with so that we can see a little bit better. So this guy won't need to go any further than that, that's for sure. I always save these stupid leads too, they actually do come in handy. Okay, so now I have them trimmed out just to a more reasonable size here. It'll be easier for me to see and work with. Hmm. Yep. So we 
you got that there, flight controller, it's going to go there. I'm just going to very quickly put the, the two side plates on and only the side plates because I just want to see how it's going to fit with the camera and uh, how we're going to get this all to work out here. This is the front of the quad as we determined because reasons and stuff. Oh wow. Oh shit. So that's new. So yeah, uh, problem with the print here. Not not too sturdy right there. That doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence when it comes to uh, actually holding the camera in place. But uh, well, I was planning on cutting that piece anyway, so I guess I can't really complain. Hey guys, so yesterday I ended up giving up a little bit early on the build because, uh, well, first my camera ran out of battery and I also ran into a problem where my stack was too tall and it was causing the TPU parts over here to bulge out like that and I knew that the camera wasn't going to hold. So I had to come up with a new plan, so I thought about it overnight and I came up with a better idea as to how this is all going to work out. So, first of all, uh, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up soldering the ESCs to the flight controller, oh, sorry, to the daughter board and uh, on using a screw and a little nylon nut as a standoff because I know I can solder around that and not damage anything, not burn anything. And then I'm going to remove all that stuff and I'm going to put the TPU part, or the, that TPU uh, shield underneath because it's only a millimeter thick and uh, put the daughter board on top and solder all the components then. Uh, then I'll do the motors last. That way I can remove everything and put it back on pretty easily. But uh, so the new stack will be something like this. Um, the little sliver of a uh, TPU bit underneath, isolating the daughter board from the frame, which is good. Um, that'll be soldered to the ESCs, of course. And then there's a 20, mil 20 millimeter screw on each corner. Right now I only have two mounted so that we can just test it out two nylon nuts uh, separate the FC from the daughter board and that's pretty much all the clearance you really need. I know I'm confident I will be able to get a wire going from the VCC to the daughter board and from the ground to the daughter board. It's going to be a little bit tricky to solder but not impossible. I'm just going to end up having to use a 18 or 16 gauge wire. I don't remember what I'm allowed to use. I'm going to have to check out the manual later but it should be fine. Also, there are gonna be pin headers going from the daughter board to the FC, which are the motor signal wires. Uh, those are gonna be soldered together as well. So it should be holding that stack tightly together and it shouldn't matter so much that I only have like a couple millimeter grab on these nuts. Uh, I might end up putting a bit of hot glue on it to just solidify that joint, but uh, uh, overall I'm not too worried. Um, Let's check out the fit of the camera. That's pretty much the last bit that we need to check the fit of. I already know that with this stack, as low as it is, we'll be able to fit the VTX. That will be no issue at all. So let's just slide the TPU on carefully. I don't want to damage it. Yeah, that's pretty much as far as it needs to go, sort of. <coughs> so the camera just basically slides in between those two bits. And then you throw a screw on each side, and it should hold it in place. Now, because of how I have the flight controller mounted, that is the lowest camera angle that I can run. So it's about 45, which is fine. That's perfectly comfortable for me, even on a racing drone. You might even end up running it a little bit higher so you can get a little bit more speed going down the straightaways and it accommodates that quite easily. Uh, that's why they had that such a big cutout on the top plate. It's pretty much what they want you to do, which is quite nice. I'm curious to see how the TPU bits are going to hold up on crashes, whether or not it'll get ripped out and the camera will go flying out. I hope not. I really like this camera. But uh, I'm curious to see. This is an interesting design decision. I haven't used anything like this before. Uh, I have used TPU pods in the Garuda, but that was a much more 
uh, resilient construction I felt. This seems like a little bit weak, but you never know. Let's, let's test it out. So I'm pretty happy with the fit there. I know I'm gonna be able to get the ESCs all soldered in there and uh, all the components mounted on this frame just fine. It's not gonna be an issue. I'm actually quite happy with how it is. This is a tighter stack than I'm used to building, but it should be totally fine. Uh, I'm confident that we can make this work. So that pretty much covers it for this part of the video where we're doing the frame build and uh, the drive fitting of the components. So, so the next part of the video, the next video I'm releasing is gonna actually be the full build where I'm gonna be going through and soldering everything and doing all the the ESC to daughter board, daughter board to FC, uh, setting up the, the VTX and connecting that to the camera, getting that all set up and getting it tested and armed and hovering essentially. So that'll be the next part of the video. Um, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, come back, check it out. I'll be releasing it in uh, the next few days. Uh, the last part of the video series will be the actual flight tuning, uh, beta flight setup, flight tuning, and uh, uh, first impression on how it feels to fly it after, before and after being tuned. Uh, I will of course be releasing a video later a few months down the line after I've had a chance to crash this thing a few more times and see how it fares, see how it does in a few different types of flight situations and try to get some flight footage for you guys as well. Uh, so I'll come back and let you guys know my full impressions of the frame after flying and crashing it a bunch of times. So thank you so much for your time and, and uh, watching this video. Please subscribe and tell your friends to come here and check this stuff out. Uh, hope that you guys learned something here today and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you very much.